How we feeling, church? We good? Oh, we should be feeling really good today because Nebraska and Iowa State got the dubs yesterday. Hello. And uh, man, that was a powerful moment. We're so grateful and thankful that you're joining us in church today. It is group launch Sunday. And if we're just meeting for the very first time, um, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Pastor Mike O'Connell. I have the privilege of serving as associate lead pastor here at Love Church under some incredible leadership on an amazing team. So many people are making this moment happen. Can we just put our hands together for all the faithful volunteers and all the people behind? Come on, let's put our hands together like we're grateful and thankful today. So, so honored. And anytime I get in the pulpit, I want to honor Pastor Todd and Denise for their leadership. I think it's today's really special for me because it's group launch Sunday. And some of you are brand new to this church and you came into this amazing building and this large auditorium, but this church started in a living room. This church was a small group when it started. And we've never, we've never forsaken that heart that the church would never grow bigger than four to 14. I just want you to know, and I want you to hear this like really plainly is that our heart is that every single person that calls this home would be in a group because we know that we're not called to do life alone. And we know that something powerful happens when we're in proximity with the right people. Is anybody with me? Have you, have you experienced that? Anybody thankful for their groups today? And it's so cool, I wanna take this moment and I wanna honor Pastor Mike in the front row. He's with us today. This is, this is awesome and he's with his beautiful daughter today and we are just, uh, number one, just grateful for Pastor Mike. Some of you don't know this, some of you that are new, some of you that have been with us for a long time know this, um, but Pastor Mike served as our youth pastor for a number of years. He was preaching on Sundays and uh, Anytime we get somebody in the house of God that is sowed faithfully into this house, we wouldn't be here without your investment. And so can we just honor Pastor Mike right now? Come on, we honor him. We honor Pastor Mike. Yeah, we honor him. Come on, I love it. We honor him in the house of God. It's, uh, it's funny because at the nine, uh, man, just there was, a, there was a great crew here. So the, 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 what I'm saying from this crew is, you better shout me down today. Um, what's funny is I'm gonna take a little bit longer in this moment because here's what's interesting is the challenge today is for you to get into a group. Because here's what I know is when, when you'll take the step of faith to get in proximity with the people of God, something powerful happens because you and I were created to do this walk with Jesus in community. And I think back to my journey and the reason that I'm holding this microphone right now is because when Pastor Mike was the youth pastor here, that was when I moved out here from Los Angeles, California. And when he was leading Rev, I would show up as a group leader. I would show up in hospital scrubs and you probably remember this, I was a scrub and one day he asked me to do announcements and I did that and then he came to me and I'll never forget this. And he said, there's a call of God on your life to preach the word and I wanna give you an opportunity. And this was well before I stepped into full-time ministry and I'll never forget that first sermon. Wow, I fumbled my way through that. But he pulled me into a back room after that sermon and he looked at me and he said, don't ever lose your anointing. I've never forgot it. And I'll just tell you this much, I'm standing here today because somebody tapped my shoulder. And then because he tapped my shoulder, then he tapped my shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Sunday, would have he would have never put a microphone in my hand on Sunday if Pastor Mike didn't put a microphone on my hand on Wednesday. This is what the church is called to do, but it happens when you're in what? Proximity. You gotta get in proximity. And when you get in proximity, guess what happens? You just might discover your purpose. Oh, is anybody with me today? I'm preaching before I'm preaching. We're not even into the end of the sermon yet, but I just had to share that um, because it's cool that both of you are sitting here right now. And um, I'm just honored to bring the word. We're gonna be actually starting a new book today. We are in the Gospel of John. You know, this year we're studying the four Gospels in the book of Acts. Today we're starting John. If I'm honest, John is my favorite gospel. I just love it. And specifically, this is a really cool time because there's a lot of new people coming to Christ right now. I mean, literally hundreds of people coming to Christ in the last month. And what's so beautiful about that is 
when a new believer comes to Christ and I tell them to get into their word, the first place I typically would direct them is the book of what? John. John. I love, I love the book of John. And uh, for those of you that are new to the Bible, our writer of this gospel is John. He was part of Jesus' inner circle. And he would tell you that he was loved the most by Jesus. <laughs> Don't we all kind of feel that? I love when Pastor Ty, you say, like, like he would say, Jesus loves me more than you, kind of, you know, and this is John. John's like, yeah, you know, I'm the most beloved. What are you going to do about it? And uh, so today we're going to actually check out a really powerful text in John chapter 4. So you can open up to John chapter 4. And I'm going to do my best to, to lean in. You guys ready to lean in? Are you ready today? Are you hungry for the word? Let's go. Let's lean in. God, thank you for this word. We know that it is alive, it's active, and I pray that it would do the work, it would, it, would, it would perform the work that it was designed to do. Father, I just yield my mouth to you. If you wanna go right, let's go right. If you wanna go left, let's go left. I've got a plan, but I submit the plan to you. Jesus, have your way in this moment. We're so thankful and grateful for what you're gonna do, and uh, would you receive the glory for it all? We pray that today would be the day of salvation for many in the room and those joining us online. We know that that's your heart, that's what you wanna do. And so we're just gonna cooperate with your spirit, we yield to you, have your way in this time. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. So I picked up kind of a new rhythm in this season and um, I know it's gonna surprise most of you in here, but I've been outside daily watering my plants. Yes, come on, hello. And um, yeah, we recently planted some new plants and so uh, the, 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 the fellow that helped me out said, hey, you need to water these like a good amount at the start and I've kind of gotten this rhythm. And now, here's the interesting thing about watering plants because when he gave me the instruction, he said, when you water the plants, what I want you to do is I want you to spend about 15 to 20 seconds on each plant. Now, that doesn't sound like a long time, but when you start watering all the plants for 15 or 20 seconds, you're spending a lot of time just watching that water water the plants. <laughs> and there are these moments, there's this tension on the inside for all my plant people in here that water their plants. You know what I'm talking about, where you're like, man, this is awesome. I feel like I don't have to be anywhere. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to answer to anybody right now, and I kind of like it. But then on the other side, there's this thing inside of you that's like, I have so much to do, I've gotta to get to this point. Is anybody with me? There's just this constant battle on the inside, like, man, I really like this rhythm. I might just cancel that meeting. This is pretty good, this is pretty awesome. And then it's like, oh my goodness, I gotta write a sermon, I gotta do this, I gotta take care of my wife, gotta, 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 next thing you know, you're like, ah! Five plants in, I'm just like, the hose is on the ground, right? And it's just like squirting water in the air. Okay, nobody's with me, it's all good. <laughs> But um, we've got this one set of plants up by the door, and I don't do a good job of always hitting that with some water. And yeah, it is pretty far away, you're right, it's pretty far, so that's my excuse. You know? And I would get water on the door and stuff, so we just, we miss that every once in a while. And if you miss giving those plants some water, it's just a couple days away from those leaves looking dry as dry. I mean, these things look dead dead, like super dead. Like, they're not gonna come back to life dead. And the plant's like drooping over. You, you, ever, you ever had a plant or a flower do this? Yep. And um, you didn't know we were going to, what is it called, like horticulture? Or, yeah, well, you didn't know you were going to horticulture school at church today, did you? Come on. I'm just the plant expert now, hello. <laughs> and uh, what's so interesting is you water these plants and literally within hours, they look brand new. They're like back up, sprightly, leaves are like refreshed, looking good, and it's just this interesting picture. And I, as I've been able to observe this, I started thinking to myself, have you ever felt like that plant? Have you ever felt like that? Just thirsty for some, some water, just, just thirsty. Hey, I mean, we've all been thirsty in the room. I'm not talking about like I need to get a drink of water. I'm talking about Arizona, a couple years ago, my family, we hiked up this mountain, we came down, and I about deboed somebody for their water bottle. That kind of thirsty. The thirsty where you spent like 10 hours driving in a car, and you're like, I need some water now. For those of you that work out at CrossFit Kinesis, you get done with a workout, you're like, I need water now. 
I'm talking about this kind of thirsty, the parched dry. Have you ever done it, right? You go, you get that cold water, you take a drink, and you're like, what, what's, the, what's the sound that we all make? <sighs> oh, water rules. Water is the best. Isn't it true? Isn't this what we say? Water's amazing. And yet what's so interesting is you and I can satisfy our thirst with water today to only be thirsty again tomorrow. And what's so interesting is when we don't not only experience this physically, but even in our soul. Like, have you ever experienced filling your soul with different things, and yet there are just moments in your life where you feel a little bit empty? See, as we look at this John chapter four text today, you're gonna see a Samaritan woman who finds herself in this place, that she's going actually to a well to have an encounter with Jesus, and she's going for physical water, but what she doesn't understand is that she's gonna have an encounter with living water. That that there are some wells she's been running to in her life that keep her coming back from more, but if she'll drink of this well, she'll never have to run to the well one one other time. This is what's gonna happen in this text, and we're gonna pick it up here in in, in, uh, verse three of chapter four. Let's start here, This this is Jesus or this is John writing about what Jesus is doing. It says, so he left Judea and returned to Galilee. And here's what it says in verse four. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Now, this is really interesting. I want us to catch this today. It says that he had to go. Now, we, we need to understand the context here is that you've got the Jews and the Samaritans, and, they're, and to spare you all the details, there was basically beef between the Samaritans and the Jews. And it was very rare, especially for a religious Jewish man, to engage with the Samaritans. This just wasn't something that was done. So what's so interesting is when you understand history and context here, when most Jews would travel from Judea to Galilee, they would always go around Samaria. They would never go through it, even though going through it was the fastest possible path. But here's what's interesting, and here's what we need to catch today, is that Jesus is always on mission. And Jesus came to go to places that the religious people would never go. I need you to know in here today that if you came into this church and you're thinking to yourself, there's no way because of my past that I could ever walk with Jesus. I just want you to know today that his grace is sufficient for you. And if you're in this place today, you need to know this, that God loves you. That he didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. It doesn't matter what your laundry list of mistakes are. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and been separated from this holy God. And the same need that you have is the same need that I have. Is anybody with me today? This is is what I love about our Savior. He goes through Samaria. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Verse six, Jacob's well was there and Jesus Tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Now, I love when I read this because this shows the humanity of our God. And I don't know about you, but I know this. I'm going through a season where I feel pretty weary. I feel pretty heavy. I feel pretty beat down. But it's, I, I find great comfort in knowing that my Savior experienced some of those same things when he walked this earth. It says this in verse seven. Soon, a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Now, what's so interesting about this is she's coming solo dolo. Now, this is, this gives us context about just who she was, and typically, women would meet at the well because this was gonna be their interaction with other females throughout the day, but she's coming by herself. It it says a lot about that she's probably outcasted in her culture and maybe doesn't have a lot of friends, and we're gonna find out more about her story later on why this could be the case. But Jesus looks at her, and I love this because there's a lot of invisible walls that he's breaking through by having a conversation with her. Moral laws, racial laws, I mean all sorts of different invisible laws that he's willing to push through to begin making connection with this Samaritan woman. He looks at her and says, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. Verse nine. 
The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. There it is. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? I think she was a bit, little bit perplexed here. Verse 10, Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. There it is. Somebody say living water. He said, I would give you living water. She said this, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoy? Jesus replied, and here it is, this is what I really want us to zone in on. Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Verse 15, please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come back here to get water. If you're a note taker today, I want you to write down the title of today's message. It's, I'm calling this message, Satisfied by Living Water. What we need to understand is Jesus is, is setting a precedent here by using this illustration of being thirsty. In other words, what he's, what he's saying is we're all spiritually thirsty. We, we all, in the same way that we've got this thirst that needs quench, quenched in the natural, in other words, we, we know when we need a drink, right? What, he, what he's trying to reveal here is that at a soul level, we need the thirst to be quenched and he's the one to do it. I love what he says in Psalm 107, nine. It says this, for he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Jesus is the living water. And I think that as we look at this particular text, we can see this, this scandalous moment where Jesus is, is breaking through to, to connect with a woman that not many other Jews would connect with. This is a really powerful, powerful story, and I think there's a couple principles that we can pull away from this. Number one, you can write it down, is that Jesus is the source of living water. Jesus is the source. He's the source. And this is the revelation that he's trying to open up to the, to the Samaritan woman. It, it's almost like he's trying to open her spiritual eyes up to this reality that he is the source. He is living water. Recently, we were at the pool with my kids, and you know that Royce always is, is a good chuckle. You know what I mean? He's just a, he's a walking sermon illustration is what I tell people. And uh, I was sitting there having conversation with the chat fields. All of our kids were, were kind of playing in the shallow end. Anybody ever been to the Lifetime Pool? Can you picture, picture what I'm talking about here? It's a no entry pool, so they're having just an awesome time. And I, here's what I can say to just set context is Royce is still, he and his relationship with the pool, like there's, it's, there's still something trying to be worked out there. Like it's weird because he's one of the most rambunctious young little guys I know, pretty fearless, but for some reason around water, he's still just, I don't know, dad, I'm not so sure about that. So it's been interesting because He's starting more and more to like go underwater and be comfortable with it. But all of a sudden, we're at the pool and all the kids are running over. And I mean, by the hype and the, dad, I mean, I thought somebody was drowning. I'm like, oh my gosh, like what's going on? They're like, you won't believe it. Royce understands what goggles are for. <laughs> what do you mean? Tell me more. He just realized that goggles are so that you can see underwater. And I like look over at Royce and he's got his goggles on and he's like jumping into the water and then like looking at me like, yes. just so stoked. Like he didn't realize that the goggles were designed to put over your eyes so that you can go underwater and open your eyes. My goodness, this revelation just opened him up to a whole new world. 
in the same way that Jesus is opening this woman up to a whole new world. She's op- he is opening her up to the fact that he is the source of living water. Look at it again. She said this, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, here it is. If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and here it is, and I, somebody say I, I. and I would give you living water. You're like, Jesus. This is not earth shattering. Jesus is the source. We knew it. But listen, listen real closely here is we need to understand that in, in, in our modern day culture, many people believe that there are all sorts of different pathways to God. I mean, we were just having a conversation with Pastor Jim. Many of you know Pastor Jim and um, he teaches a course here at Love Church called Share Your Faith Simply. And I'm telling you about every week, he's got multiple stories for our team on how he's sharing the gospel and just the responses that he's getting. And this week he was sharing with us about a young man that he was engaging and you know, he said, yeah, I believe in God. And they began to have further conversation. And uh, he, he simply asked the question, well, if, if, if I was somebody that was lost, what would you share with me on what it takes to get right with God and go to heaven? And basically, how Pastor Jim summed it up is he just said, man, there's all sorts of different paths to God. You just gotta kinda figure out what works for you. And I think that's the culture that we live in, is like, what works for you works for you, what works for me works for me, you do you and I'll do me. The Bible says, Jesus said this, these are his words, not mine. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except what? Through me. Some of you are like, well, that sounds very narrow. To me, it's very clear. It's clear. And Jesus is the source. We we need to get this in our spirit because some of us in here, if we're really honest, when I opened up with that illustration, you're like, that's exactly how I feel right now. I feel exactly how you describe that plan. In other words, I've had two decades of success in my career and yet I still feel empty. I've gone from relationship to relationship and yet I'm still looking for something different. Listen, I want you to know that if that's you in here today, you're in good company. Let me share this illustration with you. I thought this was powerful. As I was studying for this teaching, I was reminded of an interview that Tom Brady did on 60 Minutes after he won his third Super Bowl. Do you remember this? They're sitting down with Tom, and here's the thing. I wanna even just, I wanna just say this. I don't have personal relationship with Tom. I don't know him. And I would hope that if he was in the room, I could share this with a lot of humility because I don't know him, I don't know what he's walked through, and this is not to throw shade on him, but these are his words, and I think it's a great picture for you and I. Listen to what happens. Tom is having this conversation. He says this, why do I have three Super Bowl rings and still think there is something greater out there for me? He said this, there's got to be more than this. Here's after some more dialogue, when he finally stops, the reporter looks at him and he says, what's the answer? And Tom looks at him and says, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. See, there are so many of us that we're walking through this life, no shame, no blame, just deceived. We're going to the wrong well. We're going to the wrong source and we're trying to fit fill a void that is deep down in our soul that was, that was only designed for Jesus to fulfill and satisfy. You're in here today and maybe you feel wilted over, maybe you feel dry, you feel dissatisfied, you feel discouraged. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the source. He's the source. He's the one you're looking for. He's the well that when you run to him, you will never run dry. Is anybody with me in here today? I think about Tom Brady and he's sharing these, these, these thoughts. But the question is, is what is it for us? Because I think if we're honest, there are many of us that when you hear Tom sharing that, you can actually relate with what he's saying. As a matter of fact, you're saying some of the same things. You're saying, I have raised four kids who are doing well, but still think there is something greater out there for me. There's gotta be more than this. Or maybe you're in here today and you've, you've used every substance to numb, but you're still saying there's gotta be something greater out there for me. There has to be more 
than this? What source have you been looking to for fulfillment and satisfaction? If it's not Jesus, it will run dry and will keep you coming back for more. See, here's the beautiful thing is that, you know, Jesus is really setting up in this passage that he is the Messiah and that, that, that he is the well that once we come to him, we'll never thirst again. It's really just a, a beautiful picture of salvation, right? Like you and I can't earn salvation. Salvation is a free gift. It's God's grace. We can't earn it, right? We don't, we don't earn God's grace. We just receive it by faith. And then we work out our salvation from there in a process called sanctification. What we need to understand is that the devil can't take our salvation, but oftentimes we start walking with Jesus and what he wants to do is distract you and I away from his presence because every day we've gotta make a decision to pick up our cross and follow him. So there are some of us that we have found ourselves that man, you're secure in your salvation in Christ, but you have drifted away from the source. You have drifted away from the vine. And now what began in the spirit is trying to be made perfect in the flesh. And today is your chance to come back to the source. Come back to the source. Jesus is the source. Are you with me today? Number one, Jesus is the source. Number two is this. The living water satisfies our deepest desires. It satisfies our deepest desires. Verse 13, Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again, but those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. And as soon as Jesus shares this, she responds, please, sir, give me this water then I'll never be thirsty again and I won't have to come here to get water. See, Jesus was using thirst as a picture of the spiritual need and longing that everyone has. I was reminded of just how, like, how futile, how short-lived um, our thirst can be quenched. I, I took my kids this past week to Dairy Chef. It's like every time I get up here, I'm talking about something sweet, man. It's just ridiculous. God, can you just extend a hand my way and just pray for just, can we just do a deliverance section right now? I'm just, so take my kids to Dairy Chef. Somebody got us a gift card. Praise you, who, you know, pray, praise God for those of you that know us enough to get us a gift card to Dairy Chef. And uh, I'm like, hey, let's, you know, we're eating dinner. And I'm, I'm like looking up on Dairy Chef because in the summer it closes at nine. I'm like, I wonder if their hours change because school is in session now. And I look and I'm like, oh, it closes at 8.30. And by the time I looked, it was like 8.16. I'm like, kids, let's get in the car and go, baby. <laughs> we take shots downfield. So we pull up, it's like 8.27. We, we, <laughs> we just slid in. And my kids thought I was the hero, man. They're like, yeah, dad, you rule. This is awesome. <laughs> Royce is like, give me the vanilla with sprinkles, baby. You know, <laughs> just absolutely having a ball. And I'm telling you what, though, man, I got these kids. It's like a couple days later, they're looking at me like, dad, you, de you never, you never, <laughs> you never let us have anything sweet ever. Like never, <laughs> never, you never, you never, never, never. You just forget I just took you to Dairy Chef less than 48 hours ago? We're never satisfied. Is anybody with me? We're never satisfied unless we run to the well that never runs dry. Jesus is making an amazing offer here. What he offered to this woman and to anyone who would drink was something to give lasting satisfaction. The key is this, the, here's the key. The key is the drink of the water that Jesus offers. He's offering it to everyone, to all of us. And when I say everyone and when I say all, the Greek translation of that is everyone and all. Yes, all of you. I'm talking about the neighbor you don't like. Hello, somebody. Yes, that person, all, all, all. Anybody who will drink, anybody. And the reality is, is we've got to come to this realization that you and I, we're thirsty people. We're thirsty. We want, we long, we search, we reach. But only what Jesus gives satisfies to the deepest levels 
of our soul and spirit. Friends, we've got to get this today that number one, Jesus is the source, but number two, that the living water that he offers is what satisfies the deepest desires in our soul, and that leads us to number three. Write this down. The living water bubbles up in you and then out of you. Verse 13 again. I told you we weren't gonna get fancy today. Here's what I love about the scripture. You know, because this is one of the greatest, this is a tangent, by the way. This is one of the greatest tensions as a, as a preacher, is that I'm reading this text Pastor Mike and Pastor Todd know exactly what I'm talking about. You're reading this text this week and there's five sermons in here. And I got 30 minutes. So all week long, you're just feeling this tension of like, uh, uh, you said that, man, study the show thyself approved. Like, I wanna, you know, serve up a good meal and there's all, there's all this stuff in here, but we're just zoning in on one principle. My goal today is to get you hungry enough to leave here and wanna go eat your word on your own. I want, you to, I want you to get something today from this study that says, man, I need to go dig a little bit deeper in John chapter four. Verse 13, Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon be thirsty again, but those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, here it is, a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Now we get a little bit more context of what of what Jesus is talking about here a little bit further in John. This is John chapter seven, verses 37 through 39. I love this. It says this, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. There it is, anyone. They just say anyone. 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 Say it with me, anyone. 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 Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, here it is, Rivers of living water will flow, will flow from where? His heart. Rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Verse 39, look at the context that's given here. I love this. When he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. Oh, this is so good especially when we look at this in the context of the full word of God. I mean, this should make us so grateful for the new covenant. How many of you know in the old covenant, one time a year, one guy could enter into the holy of holies and he had to go through all these different rituals. And yet, what Jesus is really saying here as he comes to earth and as he begins prophesying even about what he was about to do, what he's really doing is once and for all shedding his blood paying our debt, paying our sin, right? Three days later, raising from that grave, proving who he is, and then what he does when he comes back is he looks at his disciples and he says, go into all the world, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, but he says this, wait. And we're gonna see it in Acts when we study it. In Acts, he takes them, he says, go to the upper room and wait for me to send my spirit. Here's the beautiful thing. Old covenant, one temple, one holy of holies. New covenant, temple. Temple, 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 temple. Different influence than me, different friendships than me, different neighborhood than me. You go to different places than me, different interests than me, and that's okay. We're on the same team. Temple, temple. Wherever you go, the Spirit of God in you should flow out of you onto the people that you're called to. Is anybody with me? This is what we're talking about here. That, that the whole, not trickles, not brooks, not streams, but rivers. Somebody say rivers. Rivers, rivers, rivers. This makes me think about uh, Kyle Kaspabauer, and I just got to brag on this guy for a second. It's group launch Sunday. I can't go through this sermon without telling this story, but Kyle Kaspabauer and Macy and their family, they're just, what God has done in their story in the last handful of years, I don't even have enough time to, to unravel. But here's what I know, is that it was a Thursday afternoon at the 180 house. Kyle walks in, sits down for group. 
He showed up to group before he ever walked into this church. And when he walked into group, we had to hand him one of those white Love Church Bibles. This guy believed in God, but I don't think he had ever really dove into the word of God. And I love what Pastor Mike says in the front row. He says this, that the word of God reveals who God is and what he cares about. There's so many of us that are walking around ignorant. You're good people, you believe in God, you believe in Jesus, but listen, we got biblically illiterate in this generation, and so as a result, we don't even know how to walk out and be obedient to what he's called us to. So he walks in, good heart, good, like believes in Jesus, would say Jesus is Lord, but he was, he was ineffective because he didn't know who God is or what he called him to. So he comes to this church, and every single week we're talking about becoming a what? Self-eater. The game plan is simple. Study it. Discuss it. Hear it. Apply it. You're like, I know. Stop with all that stuff. And we put a reading guide in his hand, and he showed up one week, the next week, the next week, the next week. And this guy doesn't, this guy doesn't lack discipline. This is, this is the interesting thing. He was an elite level athlete. I'm talking number one in the world in his sport. And he was still not experiencing the fulfillment and satisfaction that can only come from Jesus. But then God begins to do this work. He begins opening his eyes just like he did Royce's. And next thing you know, he's having all these crazy revelations like, I can see underwater. (laughs) Not really, but you get the point. And next thing you know, in the first encounter, I said, raise your hand if you train at CrossFit Kinesis. And I kid you not, there was at least 30, 30, 40 hands that went in the air. We might as well call CrossFit Kinesis our Gretna location. (laughs) Because here's, here's, here's the interesting thing. It's because he understands that he's called to be a river, not a lake. He's not just receiving revelation, he's actually allowing the revelation to flow through him. Do you know why the Dead Sea is dead? Because five bodies of water run in it, but nothing runs out of it. You and I, you know what happens to us when we don't share what we've been given, when we don't allow the Holy Spirit to to well up in us and come out of us? Dead, like the Dead Sea. You're dead, dead. You're walking around a dead man. You're going to heaven, but you're ineffective. He's called you and I to be rivers, not lakes. The living water bubbles up in you and then out of you. And here's the beautiful thing. Listen to what Revelation 22.1 says. This is awesome. This is God's word. It says this. Then the angel showed me a river. This is John on the island of Patmos. He said, then the angel showed me a river with the water of life clear as crystal. Here it is. Flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. So the picture that I get is that, that, that water, the, the river is flowing from the throne of God. And as I see Kevin back here, Kevin, my man Kevin in the back here, he, he's like, the guy's just, the, 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 the river flows out of him because he allows the river to just flow in him. It's just this beautiful thing. He's, he's receiving from heaven and taking what he receives from heaven and he's giving it away. He's allowing the spirit to bubble up in him and not just bubble up in him, but bubble up out of him. Are you with me? This is what happens with living water. So number one, Jesus, Jesus is the source. Number two, the living water satisfies our deepest desires in our soul. And number three, the living water bubbles up in you and then out of you. Now, I love this because some of you, you're getting excited just like the Samaritan woman. Sir, how do I get this water? I want this. Are you with me? And I, I was reading this text, and then it takes an interesting turn, and I want you to see this as I invite the keys up here as we close out, but it says this in verse 16. This is awesome. So Jesus is so patient. He's connecting. I mean, so winsome, just building rapport, being so wise, like being willing to, to have conversation with this lady. He's sitting down. He's not obnoxious, he's having this dialogue, this conversation, so good, we can take notes from that. Jesus is doing a great job here of of evangelizing this Samaritan woman, and then all of a sudden she says like, yes, I want the living water. And then Jesus looks at her and says, go and get your husband. 
I'm like, what kind of water did Jesus drink when the woman gave him a drink? What's going on here? What, go and get your husband. What are we talking about here? Husband. Here's what she replies with in 17. I don't have a husband. Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband for you have had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. See, so many of us, we think that we're hiding from God, but you ain't. I'm not. I think I'm getting away with it. And God's like, come on, bro. Like I, I created the universe. I created you. I know the hairs on your head. You think you're getting away with that? You certainly spoke the truth. And here's, look at this, verse, verse 19. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. <laughs> oh, the Bible's humorous. It really is. It's actually pretty awesome. But here's what I want us to catch, because I love this. If you go, and we're not gonna read the rest of the story, but in verse 25, it says, the woman said I, to this to Jesus, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And then listen to what Jesus says. He told her, I am the Messiah. Shortly after this, the woman runs to her village. Remember, this woman that was outcasted, this woman that when she showed up at the well, she was on relationship number six, runs back to Samaria and begins to share her story, the power of story. The, the people can debate the Bible, they can't debate a transformed life. She goes back into Samaria, and next thing you know, all these Samarians are coming to hear from Jesus. She's doing what we're talking about, but here's what I need us to understand as we finish today. As, as some of you think about, ah, I feel like that plant you described. That feels like my life. As a matter of fact, I can relate to this woman. Maybe it's not relationships, but you can relate to this idea that you've been running to the wrong well, and it's keeping you thirsty. And today you're like her saying, please, sir, I want the living water, I want that. But here's what you need to understand, the reason, did, did Jesus bring this up to shame her? The answer is no. He didn't confront her to shame her, but to make an exchange with her. An exchange. He's, because here's what we need to understand, conviction always precedes conversion. It's godly sorrow that brings men to repentance. But here's what happens. The good news is never good until we first hear the bad news, but it's the bad news that helps us recognize that there's no way I could ever earn it in my own strength, so we still know this. It's the goodness of God that brings men to repentance, but it's the bad news that hurts our heart and makes us feel like there's no way I could pay this debt, and so, oh my goodness, Jesus, by his stripes, I'm healed. By his grace, oh, he is so good. I will absolutely receive that. Jesus doesn't move past this moment. But he, but he reveals to her that the well she's been running to need to die first before she can walk in newness of life. And that's the invitation for us in here today. Some of us, we gotta walk away from some dead wells that aren't producing any fruit in our lives. We gotta walk away, recognize, turn from, repent of. You know, are you gonna be perfect? I don't know, but I know the perfect one will live in you and give you power to keep going, to overcome, to not turn back and go to that well. And guess what? The Bible says that a righteous man falls seven and gets up eight. So if you return to the well, just like in Proverbs, it says that a dog will return to his vomit, guess what? His mercies are new every day. So get back up and keep pursuing after him. Are you with me today? Is anybody with me in here today? Come on, we ought to put our hands together and praise God right now. I'm telling you, God is inviting us into something fresh this morning, living water. Somebody say living water, living water. And today we need to walk away knowing this, that Jesus is the source, that the living water is the only thing that will fulfill and satisfy. And that this living water, it, it's gonna bubble up in us and then out of us. And here's the beautiful thing, that this church exists so that every single person in this room would walk in the 5S life and experience God's best. That looks like being surrendered. That looks like being surrounded in a group. That looks like being spirit-led. That looks like being self-fed, and that looks like being sent. The beautiful thing is, is when you and I drink from the well of Jesus, that's how we're gonna be effective in our city. For those of us joining us online, 
You're gonna reach people in your area when you drink from Jesus as well. Listen, right now, I know there are people tuning in in India right now in a closet because they can't necessarily go in public. But here's what I know. One person at a time, you can allow the spirit of the living God to flow out of you and give you power and authority and boldness. And just like when they looked at the early disciples, they said, man, they must have been with Jesus. They're going to look at you and say, "Ah, I know. I know he's been with somebody that I've never experienced before. This is the invitation today. Do we want to receive it today? Do we want to receive it? Let's bow our heads. I'm going to pray for us today. Father, I thank you right now. I thank you right now that though we feel wilted, though we feel dried up, maybe even forgotten, too far gone, today, We've encountered living water. You tell us that when we're burdened and heavy laden to come to you because your yoke is easy and your burden is light and you will give us rest. Rest in our souls, deep in our souls. You will fulfill and satisfy. And we thank you, Jesus, that you left perfection. You left heaven and came to earth and lived the life that we couldn't. And you died the death that we deserved. And when you hung on that cross, you said to tell us die, it is finished, it is done. You proved who we were when you rose from that grave and now you search the earth and you send out your spirit and you invite us into relationship to walk with you, to experience this living water. And so God, I pray that this week that we would, that we would appropriate your spirit that today we would receive the fresh outpouring and that, that day by day and minute by minute and hour by hour, we would allow your spirit to work in us and through us so that we can be effective in these days. God, we thank you for the work that you're doing. I just believe in this room right now that there are some of you in this place that you're done. You're, you're, you're just like, if I could interpret what that plant is crying out in that moment is, I need some water. It's showing me. And right now you've done a good job at putting yourself together and your lawn looks good and you drive into a nice house and you're driving a nice car and everything looks good on the outside, but deep down on the inside, you know that today is the day that you're gonna receive living water. And so if today you wanna make that decision with, with every head bowed, I just want you to slip your hand in the air by faith right now. I want you to put your hand in the air boldly today and I want you to say, I'm saying yes to Jesus. I see your hands right here. I love the boldness. I see your hands in the back over there. I see hands over here on the right, hands over here on the right. Come on, can we just put our hands together right now for what God is doing in this place? Church, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna stand and in a moment of response, we're gonna praise God for the work that he's done. And if you just slipped your hand up in the air, I want you to come forward and I'm gonna pray with you today. Today you're crossing over from death to life. The old things are gone and the new things have come. If you put your hand in the air as we sing this out, I want you to come forward. If you're joining us online, this is for you. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's sing this out. Come on, if you put your hand in the air today, make your way forward. Come on, I love your faith, bro. Come on.